lost me it was a lost Mary for me at your big age you're there feeling over a lost Mary thing up make sense soon the bang get and put it over the wall the definition of grooming, when a person builds a relationship with a child, young person or an adult who's at risk so they can abuse them and manipulate them into doing things. The abuse is usually sexual or financial, but it can also be other illegal acts. Types of grooming. Grooming can take place online or in person and it can happen over a short or long period of time for days slash years. Groomers are good at lying about who they are, particularly online, where they can create a false identity and pretend to be younger than they are. People can be broomed on online through social media, text messages, WhatsApp. A groomer can be a stranger or someone the victim already knows and trusts. For example, through a friend or family or at a club they go to. Signs of grooming. It can be difficult to tell if someone is being groomed. The signs aren't always obvious and may be hidden. Some signs to look out for. Are they being secretive about how they are spending their time? Do they have an older boyfriend or girlfriend? Do they have money or new things like clothes or mobile phones that they can't or won't explain? Are they drinking or taking drugs? Are they spending more or less time than usual online or on their devices? Do they seem upset or withdrawn? There's a whole definition on literally what is being played out in front of our eyes. Now, let's be FFR. I've seen this whole situation play out with Philip Schofield and it's just crazy to me the privilege that this man clearly has as much as as much as we the public are rah, 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 outraged it's likely that in his four walls and clearly in the establishment where he was working was not a big deal but because it was getting out to the public they had to sweep out the mess philip met this young man when he was 15 15 while he was 40 Back in 2011. Philip Schofield used to be like an ambassador, founder, patron of this art school. Helping children get into creative arts. And in 2014, there was actually a Twitter exchange with this same man that he is now alleged to have had a fling with in the workplace. I don't see how he doesn't see how crazy this looks. Because even after watching his interview... Even after watching his interview and him addressing everything, I still don't feel like he even understands where the public or where people are coming from. Because let's be real, if this was not a big deal, you would not have left your workplace. And your bosses would not have agreed to you leaving if it wasn't a big deal. How are you on Twitter going back and forth with a 14-year-old? As someone that has a radar on him 24-7, someone that their sexuality has been speculated, why would you be online talking to a boy? Now, when this boy reached 18, I think Philip and him came to the understanding that this boy wants to get into TV. He wanted to not only act, he wouldn't mind presenting as well. And he invited him on to check out the, the ITV studio and look around and get an insight of the environment he works in. That privilege, the, the fact that that happened and absolutely nobody asked, why are you chaperoning an 18-year-old? Why are you so into supporting this one particular 18-year-old boy? This boy went from attending a theatre academy to exchanging words over Twitter. There had to be at some point you guys exchange numbers and you also then invited him to the ITV studios. Where is this boy's parents? When I was watching his interview, I never once heard him mention his parents were fine with it. I spoke with his parents and his parents said that as long as he's safe and to push him in the direction of his career, then he, I never once heard that at all. Never once. From 18 to 20, 
he then managed to get a job as a showrunner. Since this young man got a job, four years on, 2020, not so long ago, and I actually did a video on this, Philip Schofield came out as gay. I always ask, yeah, being someone that is of the LGBT community, in my opinion, there is always a reason for coming out about your sexuality. You guys have watched my video where I came out to my audience and told them my journey, like what I've gone through, like my sexuality and where I'm at mentally right now. And the reason why I did that was because I felt like I had a weight on my shoulders. I felt like my content was limited. I felt like I was limited to speaking about certain things. I felt like if, if you saw me with a certain type of person, you would attach it to my sexuality. I felt like if I dressed a certain way, if I acted a certain way, it will automatically, it will automatically be attached to my sexuality. And I wanted my audience to, I wanted to build a relationship with my core audience. And that was one of the reasons why I came out on my platform. For you to come out on your TV show with the help of your best friend whilst married is crazy to me. And when I watched Piers Morgan's talk TV debate and conversation, he said that it had been rumoured that him and this boy had had a sexual relationship for three years. The rumour was pondering for three years up until the point that he decided to come out. I also feel like a lot of these news reporters were going to release the rumours and release statements and to avoid that, he just came out. Why not, why not let the topic of the sexuality override the, the worse fact that he's actually dating somebody that is extremely younger than him and that he's known since they were an early teenager. There are even people that come out when they're happy and in love. I have a relative that came out in their late 30s because they went out in a relationship and in love. That situation didn't work out. Now they're single again, but you've come out now. So we, we now know your truth. But I always say when you come out, come out because you genuinely want your people to know. And I don't feel like he done it because he genuinely wanted people to know. I feel like there were so many things swirling about him. And as someone that has built a good relationship with the ITV bosses, with all the producers and directors, it got out of control and he lost control. So coming out was taking back his control. Earlier this year, Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby were kind of trolled because it is alleged that they pushed in to go and send their well wishes to the Queen. I don't know about all that, but the fact that it took that scandal and the brother's scandal earlier this year, the brother being convicted of 11 sexual offences involving children in October 2016 and in October 2019, the fact that it took those incidents for people to start digging up what had already been spoken about because people had discussed him dating this young man and the rumours around it back in 2020, you know, 2019 and 2020, this topic was already there. But the coming out completely overshadowed it. The brother even got sentenced to 12 years in prison. And Philip Schofield said, oh, that's not my brother. I no longer have a brother. He done the whole speech and, and I'm just sitting here thinking, look at yourself. Look at yourself. One thing I've learned about like people's behaviour and how people control how they want to be perceived how they handle a scandal. And I've learned that the minute somebody starts piling on paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs, they're, they're defensive. They're defensive. They, they don't know where to turn. They don't know what to do. During this time, it is reported that him and Holly 
were not on the best of terms. And I feel like when those reports were coming out, it was like the next thing closest to the allegations about him grooming a young man. It is alleged that an injunction was put out. So nothing in regards to that could be spoken about. But everything else could have. And once again, anything else that potentially surrounds this scandal will always be brought up. And it doesn't, and the funny thing is, it doesn't need to be in a newspaper, babe. Social media nowadays is our news. Twitter, hey, you can look up the whole timeline of events on Twitter. You can look up the rumours and allegations on Twitter. The fact that it is alleged that there, an injunction was put in place to control a narrative and seal everything in regards to these allegations, personally, I feel like made it worse. Made it worse. It made people hungry to want to know more. On May the 12th, Philip wrote a statement saying him and Holly, saying Holly was his rock and the last few weeks haven't been easy for him. On the 20th, ITV confirmed Philip will leave with immediate effect. On the 26th of May, Philip resigned and released a statement via the Daily Mail in which he admitted to having a consensual relationship, a consensual relationship on and off with a younger male colleague whilst being married. That statement as w- is what lit the flame and has created the domino, the domino effect that we've seen these past week, this past week. I'm actually shocked that Piers Morgan sat on his problem and didn't see the outrage and the the madness in all this. The fact that he could bombard Meghan Markle tweeting and reporting on her every single day, going on Good Morning and just constantly going, going on about Meghan Markle, Meghan Markle, Meghan Markle every day. But just one tweet about Philip Schofield, one debate about him and it's done. The bias in that alone shows you there's a deeper issue when it comes to this right here. He admit he said that he lied to all his colleagues and that Holly didn't know and all these people didn't know. Now, what I'm going to say is I can completely understand when he says that Holly didn't know in one breath. Because if you look at the factors, why would he tell Holly, good and more knowing he's married, he's got two kids, and that's just a madness. For him to tell her and her keep that secret is crazy. But then in the same breath, it's all, when you and someone are, work together every single day, you do a lot of things together, it is almost impossible to hide. In the interview, he made a comment about, oh, um, when you get in a dressing room, like you just let things out and you, you share everything in the dressing room, but it stays in the dressing room, but somehow Holly didn't know. What? Holly said she asked him about the rumours when everything went around in 2020 and he denied it. It's very hard to believe. And who's not going to want to keep their job? Who's not going to want to keep that public, clean image? But going back to your workplace and doing the how are you, it doesn't seem genuine. Just address what you need to address and keep it moving. But the first of all, how are you? Doesn't cut it for anyone. No one's believe in that bullshit, I'm sorry. The academy that he funded and that he supported somehow closed down the same year that he came out. And it almost seems like that academy was a grooming institution for just them to plot against kids and just do whatever they want. Because on the forefront, it looks like Charity work, it looks like support, it looks like a good deed. And that's the thing about being famous, and that's the thing about some influence as well. Influencers as well. There there are influencers that abuse their platform, abuse the influences influence that they have, and coerce people and manipulate people into doing things that they wouldn't necessarily do, but because they might not be as confident, they might be insecure, they might be scared, like they're not going to address it publicly. People that have a public image will do absolutely anything 
to keep it squeaky clean. Especially if things go bad, it jeopardizes their job opportunities. They are going to make sure that all their badness is nipped in the bud. Philip Schofield was also acquaintances or good friends with another man named Simon Schofield. Simon was also a founder of this same theatre agency. And he, there were pictures of Simon at aged 13 while he was in his 30s. And I just don't see, and I'm not, if, don't get me wrong, if Simon is say, is okay with it and has not questioned how him and his relationship with this man has panned out, that's absolutely fine. But how I look at it is I just don't seem to understand how you're just mates with someone that's 10 plus years older than you. I've told you guys about my first relationship. My first relationship with a man, I was 17 and this man was nearly 10 years older than me. Now, I I mentioned that even even though initially I lied about my age, once my age was uncovered, it did not seem to be a problem. But the mental abuse that I, the mental abuse that was inflicted on me throughout throughout those months of us being in a relationship changed who I am as a person, literally, completely changed me. Because I was, there was a time where I was very open and very free. I wanted to chat to everyone. I wanted to meet new friends. I wanted to make new friends. I wanted a large friendship group. And during that relationship, this person made me feel like I was a bad person for wanting to make new friends, for wanting to try new things and be around new people. It, it, it When I look back at it, it's insane. And I know the term grooming might sound, it sounds bad. It is bad. But what else do you want us to call it? It is what it is. And I feel like throughout this whole interview, statement, statement, everything is to keep that relationship with the network. Keep that relationship with those that work in the TV industry. Not throwing throwing anyone under the bus because maybe one day he might just get a job behind the scenes or whatnot. The same video of Philip in the restaurant with the same boy. Oh, we were just waiting for a cab. Bullshit. It was a lost Mary for me. At your big age, you're there fiending over a lost Mary. You're sitting on an interview talking about Cheryl Cole. Even on social media, people are talking about Leonardo DiCaprio and all these people. No one, absolutely no one has condoned their behaviour. No one has not given them the side eye. Absolutely no one. But we're deflecting here. We're talking about you. I want you guys to comment down below and tell me your thoughts. Do you guys feel like it's not that deep? Do you feel like it's perfectly fine for him to now be dating this younger guy. Bear in mind, he is also cheating on his wife. He's never once expressed, oh, me and my wife have an understanding. He's never, that's never come out of his mouth. I feel like all of his actions have been under his control. All of his actions have been under his doing. And I genuinely feel like his family are dealing with the repercussions of that, dealing with the questions, dealing with the public scrutiny, even though these people are not in the public. But all because of his behaviour, they are just thrown into it because that's her husband and that's their dad. And and, and, And I feel like a lot of this is very selfish. It's all to cover the tracks of keeping that the job or keeping that 
relation. I don't know how to explain it. That was all for this video. Make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe. Again, I'm trying to be as consistent as possible. So I will do my best to have a video out every couple of days. I'll give you a lot of that every couple of days. Thank you guys for watching. Again, like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next one.